Our next speaker is Dr. Kevin Boyd. He's a pediatric dentist at Dentistry for Children and is also the attending clinical instructor at Children's Memorial Hospital's residency program planning uh, program. And also, I hear an aspiring anthropologist. Yes. Here to present industrialization and crooked teeth. First slide's a little disturbing, I'll warn you right off the bat, but it illustrates my point. This is Ethan. Uh, Ethan is an eight year old. He looks a lot younger. He's not growing. He's suffocating every night. Uh, he has obstructive sleep apnea, severe. And he was referred to me by the sleep medicine team at Children's Memorial Hospital after two orthodontists said conventional orthodontics can't do anything for him. They were right. Conventional orthodontics cannot do anything for him. What I'm going to talk about is non-conventional orthodontics. Snoring leads to behavioral problems. When kids snore, a study one years old shows that at one, they have behavior problems because their brains, while they're developing, get starved. Jaws are meant to be forward when they're back in the face, like with animals that are bred for that. These animals die sooner and have problems. Theoretically, if I would have known this guy when he was four, I could probably have uh, prevented this. Right now, surgery could fix it, but not that well. Um, this is another form of something called malocclusion, and it's just the way the teeth line up and the jaws line up. Uh, these are two severe forms. Both jaws are back, not just the lower or the upper. The tongue is what's responsible for forming our jaws and our face. Uh, malocclusion didn't exist 300 years ago. There was no need for an orthodontist 300 years ago. Anthropologists have known this for decades. Uh, this is only starting to penetrate my profession. I am an anthropology student. I'm doing work at the Field Museum. My, uh, the hypothesis I'm testing is that breastfeeding, ancestral type breastfeeding, develops a palate and lifelong commitment to hard foods. This is a deep, narrow palate. This is a zoo captive animal, an orphan from a murdered mother. That's how they got baby chimps. Um, this is a child born in medieval times. This is what all palates looked like since we were anatomically modern. Humans go back 200,000 years. Uh, that's something that was very new to me. This is what I see in private practice almost every day. Uh, processed food, probably bottle fed. Uh, I'm not, and, and here's what happened. Uh, before the Industrial Revolution, women worked in the home and their kids were nearby. You could feed them on demand for into the third year of life. That's what we did. I'm not suggesting we still do that. I'm just saying that's what happened. Then cottage industries, the first skilled workers, uh, had they could stay home and breastfeed. These are the first skilled workers. It wasn't men that entered the textile mills during the Industrial Revolution. It was women. And that's when they began to be separated from their children. And that's when processed food started, and artificial nipples, and infant formulas. All those things that took away the stimulation from the developing palate and face. Uh, this is a, a, a non-conventional orthodontics I'm talking about. It's BioBlock Orthotropics. It was invented by an orthodontist who was also an anthropologist 50 years ago. This is meant to recreate the stimulation that moms used to give their kids. Uh, I start treating kids at two and three years old with this stuff. And uh, you think, why? how come doctors don't, more of them do this? Evolutionary biology was not required of me to get into dental school, nor is it required of physicians to get into medical school. Darwin's theory was too controversial when the medical and dental curriculums were being designed 100 years ago. So we have to go back and learn this stuff, and I'm trying to start a movement. Um, <laughs> the other thing is genetics versus epigenetics. This takes millions of years. It's rearrangement of the DNA, the genome. This takes decades. This has nothing to do with rearranging the DNA. It's how the DNA is interpreted. Epigenetics, whole new field. The term genetics doesn't mean anything anymore. This is another result of uh, environmental change. These are monozygotic twins. They have the same DNA, but they look vastly different. Conventional orthodontics, extractions, headgear. Non-conventional orthodontics, expansion at an early age and moving the face forward, making room for the tongue, letting the kid breathe. This is an example uh, of epigenetics. It's changing punctuation. You don't change the words of the DNA. Uh, what did Yoko mean? He's happy. Look at the expression. Did Yoko mean this or this? They just changed the punctuation and look how John reacted to it. That essentially is the difference between genetics and epigenetics. Um, this is what all skulls looked like before the Industrial Revolution. Wisdom teeth were in. 
The front of the face was forward. This is a construct that orthodontists use to judge where the face, uh, the front of the face is. This jaw is obviously back, the lower jaw, but so is the upper jaw. And most people miss that. They say only the lower jaw is back. That's a, uh, this is the norm that we use in BioBlock orthotropics. Orthodontists really don't use this one. Uh, if the teeth are straight, no matter whether the face is back or not, they call it successful. This is the Bolton analysis. If your kids are getting orthodontics, make sure your orthodontist is using the Bolton profile norm. That's where you want your kid treated. Um, this is where the airway can get blocked off at the adenoids or down here. And this law says if you're at the bottom of a pool and have a snorkel, do you want a, a soda straw or do you want a garden hose to breathe through? Because that's really a little bit of difference of widening there makes a huge difference in airway resistance, kind of like the reverse venturi effect. Um, this is a child that was slated for jaw surgery. The surgeons were going to break his jaw. And I, uh, he was in treatment with BioBlock, and I convinced the surgeon, let BioBlock proceed. This was done by a colleague of mine. And if they pass a sleep study, they'll call off the surgery. I'm pleased to say the surgery was called off three weeks ago. This is how BioBlock orthotropics works. We advance the upper jaw first. Most people would say this kid, that his upper jaw isn't too far back. It is too far back, according to anthropologically correct norms. Okay, the norms that the orthodontists use now are based upon pre-industrial norms. Faces have grown back since then. This is conventional orthodontics. The teeth are straight. Most orthodontists would call this successful. She looks like me. My jaw is way back. I snore. This is my friend. Uh, she did BioBlock orthotropics, kept the teeth straight, and brought the jaw jaws forward. This kid is less likely to ever have breathing problems, and she looks a lot better. I call this airway disaster. I fly a lot these days. Uh, this is a child of an orthodontist who's being treated with BioBlock orthotropics, and that's grandpa and that's dad. Uh, mom wishes she could have gotten to them when they were younger. So thanks a lot.